For the next 9 to 10 days, I will be exploring the magical country of Uzbekistan. This time, I'm really going for an adventure. Indeed, I'm traveling solo, I booked my ticket yesterday, and I have absolutely no plan. But I'm not worried at all, because I'm convinced that I will meet wonderful locals. <laughs> I look like I'm from Afghanistan, right? <laughs> Hello, welcome to my guest house. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> An amazing culture. How do you look? <laughs> like a Shrek. <laughs> Other fellow travelers. Tasty food. gorgeous landscapes and an astonishing architecture. From the modern Tashkent to the Autonomous Republic of Karakalpakstan all the way to the border with Afghanistan, I will make sure to visit each and every inch of this beautiful country and report it back to you. This is Uzbekistan. All right, so first day, we just found this really cool hostel behind me, art hostel. Yeah, I was worried to be alone, but uh, it didn't last for very long. Just before uh, boarding the plane, I just met these two French girls. They have their own guide, so I'll go uh, check out the capital with them. And we'll see how it goes. Now, Tashkent can be divided in two areas to visit, the old city and the new city. We started in the old city with Hazrat Imam complex. This complex has been central to Tashkent for centuries. Indeed, many important buildings were erected right in this area. They extensively restored the complex itself in the recent years. Part of that restoration was for the 16th century mosque of Hazrati. This mosque has two very tall minarets of more than 50 meters high and a very beautiful prayer room. Also within the same complex, we got to visit Abu Bakr al-Shashi mausoleum. Inside there, you can find a copy of the Holy Quran that dates back from 644. It is allegedly the oldest one available on earth. And finally, you may also visit the Barakkan Madrasa. Madrasas were the Islamic schools where students were taught in scientific matters such as astronomy, philosophy, theology, or medicine. <laughs> After the independence, the building was falling into ruins. So the government started a restoration program that allowed local merchants to set small shops in the old student rooms. In there, you can find all sorts of local art crafts. One other very nice thing you can do is to visit Chorsu Bazar. Indeed, there is nothing better than a local market to immerse yourself into the local vibe. There are various sections where they sell all types of things. They sell clothes, but they also sell spices, and there's a very extensive food section, covered and uncovered. In the center of the market is an area where merchants cook food and you can eat it directly over there. It's horse meat. Horse meat, okay. Yeah, horse meat. Okay. Wow. What is this? Uh, Hasid. Ahmad. Uh, it's really amazing. You have everything you need, like fresh bread, fresh fruits, fresh raspberries, juices, honey, like super cheap honey. So um, anything you would want to bring, that would be a really amazing place to, uh, to come to. Now there is also an indoor section. In there you can find mostly all types of meats, some dry nuts, some olives, even some Korean kimchi. For my part, I really love that super thick yogurt that was really good. Central Asian club center where oh my god check this out three tons of plov wow plov itself is a mix of fried rice vegetables you saw usually onions and carrots and serves with either lamb or beef meat in here in Tashkent particularly they add a piece of horse meat in the serving 
Therefore, in the kitchen, they have section for each step of the cooking. One for cooking the rice, one for cutting the meat, one for mixing and frying all the ingredients, and one even for cleaning all the cauldrons. Central Asian Plov is quite a busy place, especially at lunchtime. I mean, with one of the biggest cauldrons in the entire world that can cook up to three tons of food and serve around 3,000 people, that's quite understandable. Plov is surely the most emblematic dish of Central Asia. Indeed, every Central Asian country claims to have the best plov. All I can say is the one I tried here was really delicious. If you think that the plov of your country or the plov of your city is better than the one in Tashkent, please comment below and let me know where I should go next to try the best plov in the world. After a short stop in the Museum of Applied Arts to check out some beautiful handmade carpets and some beautiful local attires, we headed straight to Tashkent New City. In the new city, you can immediately feel that everything was built in the last century. There are a few landmarks that you can visit. We visited the Amir Temur Plaza, who's one of the national heroes of Uzbekistan, then the Square of Independence, then the Martyrs Monument dedicated to those who lost their life in World War II. But really the most interesting place to visit in the whole city is the subway. Yes, you heard right, the subway. So, the really interesting fact here is that up to 2018, it was a criminal offense to take pictures inside the metro. Indeed, the Tashkent metro was built as a nuclear bomb shelter and therefore considered strategic to national security. Today, you can take as many pictures as you want of the 43 stations and their beautiful decorations. I'm starting to feel the the fatigue right now. So the girls are gone. They've gone to uh, another city by train and now I'm back at the hostel, but I'm not alone. I'm, I'm gonna chill a little bit with the Swedish guy that I missed this morning and uh, tomorrow up for another city. Oh, I didn't hang out for very long. We yeah, just met Walhan from <laughs> Belgium. Belgium and Anton. Anton from Sweden. Sweden. Yeah. So we're going to explore the city a bit at night. Kind of cold, but uh, a lot of people. We kind of missed that. No, actually. Did we mess up? Yeah, yeah. I think we okay. messed up. Okay, let's go back there. We ended up going in the only Lebanese restaurant in Uzbekistan to enjoy this delicious hummus. Note to myself, bring warm clothes next time. <laughs> Good jacket. Oh my god, it's right. freezing. <laughs> These guys, you know, Swedish. Yeah, I should be used to this, but I'm not. I should have. That's the Breton, huh? You're Breton. Nah, I'm Breton, it's not like that. I'm Breton, it's not Don't believe, don't believe that. I'm Breton, it's not like that. I will see this. We got here to the airport, I'm trying to go to the city called Nukus. Um, I have no idea how I'm going to plan what I kind of want to do, which is uh, to visit the Aral Sea because it's not in the city. We still need a, a few hours of uh, driving, but we go out there, ask a few people and see, see what can be done. Yeah? After I got on a plane, it didn't take me very long to make a new friend. My seat neighbor was a young student that was going to go visit his girlfriend in Nukos. Hello. <laughs> First time for him to take a plane. He's a bit afraid. <laughs> Here we go for take off. Very fast. And now we go up. Yeah. I wish I could still be this excited every time I take a flight. It reminded me of my first time. I'm switching my phone. Maybe it's in the cloud. <laughs> it's so funny. After a few hours, I thought it would be a very big fail, but I was able to find Anwar. the brother Anwar from Karakal, Pakistan. Karakal, Pakistan. <laughs> the Autonomous Republic of Karakal, Pakistan. Yeah, so uh, he's going to be my driver for the day, take me around uh, a little bit the, the nice areas to check out. This should be good. <laughs> The first impression I had of the area is that it's much less urbanized than Tashkent and therefore much more relaxed. It's my Popeye, so we are 
discussing uh, jujitsu in here in the middle of, uh, of Uzbekistan. So I'm showing him your profile. They love UFC, they love MMA. That's the main sport that they enjoy in this country. Since I just really got Anwar off the plane without prior booking and that he doesn't speak a word of English. Yes, yes. Bazar yeah. bazar the tour company owner was kind enough to call me at each and every stop to give me touristic information in English. Not only cemetery. Yeah, so yeah, cemetery of people, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Historical, uh, historical uh, complex. Alright, so the first stop we are making is Mizdahan. 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 So it's it's a cemetery where Oops, wrong location. Mizdahan, no ma Mizdahan. Hayarunda Auzi Kretinjaga. Oh. Hey, Rahman. So the first site uh, where we're stopping is a cemetery called Mizdahan. <laughs> wrong location again, or actually wrong entrance this time. <laughs> I still have some hope we can make it to Mizdahan. <laughs> After a quick stop at the bathroom, we were finally able to find the right entrance. Mizdahan used to be the second largest city of the region and a sacred burial site for Zoroastrians. Today, you can still find and visit some very beautiful Islamic mausoleums dedicated to local saints. Entire families come here to visit and to pray for the soul of the saints. We visited this mausoleum that had one of the longest tombs I've ever seen before heading to the local mosque for Friday prayer. Alright guys, so we're here in the site of the RLC in Moynok and this is truly appalling. I mean, you, you have reached a place over here. It used to be the sea, so come, come, I'll show you. All of this used to be the fourth biggest uh, sea or in, inland sea in the world after the Caspian Sea, the Lake Superior in North America and the Lake Victoria in Africa. So check this out. Everything disappeared. Everything. Listen, I mean, the main reason is that one day uh, there's this Soviet general that just woke up and decided to turn the whole country of Uzbekistan into a major productive area for cotton. And he succeeded. He made Uzbekistan the first uh, producer in the world for cotton. But all this cotton needed a lot of water and it was pumped out of here. So a place that provided jobs to more than 10,000 people with a lot of fisheries completely disappeared. And this is just a absolutely crazy uh, ecological disaster. So you are seeing it right here. That's very sad. What you have to know is that this part was actually a fishing village. Not only fishermen lost their job, but the whole industry that goes behind it, families, the fishing industry, the canning industry, yeah, all this for over exploitation to become number one in cotton production, monoculture. So this is the end of a very nice day that we had here with Anwar uh, who doesn't speak a word of English but uh, we were able to communicate yeah and the funny thing he looks like my cousin yes I have some cousins that look a little bit Asian <laughs> yes Anwar did not speak English but that didn't mean we could not enjoy our three hours drive back to the city we just had to watch out for the occasional cows crossing the streets.
Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Goat, 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 the goat, the goat. So we we're just stopping for gas, but really for gas. <laughs> that's not the American way of saying it, uh, of saying patrol. No, that's gas. So they're using uh, method, I think, uh, directly with some modification on the cars. So apparently, most of the cars in here, in this region of Uzbekistan, are equipped with this type of uh, gas reservoirs. So I'll show you in a second how they do it. I installed this, this um, mechanism in here, directly in here. So the car is being filled with gas from the machine straight into the hood. And they have installed a huge bottle in the back that gets filled. And so no more, no, no more patrol at all. So this thing in this car is completely useless, it's not used at all. Wow, they're interesting. First time I've seen this in my life. We drive back with the Maya sunset, but I still have an issue. I don't have anywhere to sleep and I'm not sure I can go to the next city. So this, I'll figure it out with the tour company owner once I reach the city. All right, so uh, I just arrived here and now they're proposing to me actually to sleep in their, in their house. And uh, we're meeting another blogger, actually a Hello. famous <laughs> one. <laughs> so what, what does she blog about? About uh, real life, okay. Indian film from... Indian film, Bollywood? Yes, okay. Bollywood. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Jimmy, Jimmy, Haja, Haja. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow Aigul. From, My name uh, is Aigul. <laughs> Now that we can communicate in English, suddenly everything became clear. Basically, Khudliman here is the tour company owner that I was speaking to on the phone, and Anwar is our husband, and they are both inviting me in their house. This is surely going to be interesting. Very thick. There we go. There we go. So where are we going now? Yes. 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 <laughs>